Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. What I think will happen overnight with the Labour government is that they'll give us, you know, at least a two-year commitment on those core kind of grants that we really need to know how much money is coming in so we know what we've got to work with. Like every single council will do what has to be done. If we have to reduce services, if we have to reduce staff, if we have to do whatever we have to do to balance the books, we'll do it. But, you know, we want to plan in a positive way. We will answer those questions almost overnight. That was the mayor of Hackney, Caroline Woodley. She was speaking to us back in March. She predicted that Keir Starmer would provide an overnight answer to the woes of local authorities. More than 100 days into his premiership, has he really delivered? Hello, you're listening to Bloomberg UK Politics and I'm Caroline Hepke. And I'm Ewan Potts. Welcome to the programme. So... A very long time. Now, it's par for the course to expect a bit of sabre rattling and special pleading. And we've had plenty of that with appeals from small companies, big business and cabinet ministers making the case for why their department really needs more funding. Well, today the call is coming from local councils. Certainly not the first time we've been told about the parlour state of local authority finances. But a new survey today from the local government association says that a quarter of local councils will need a bailout to stave off bankruptcy in the next two years. Two financial years, yes. And those councils are asking Chancellor Rachel Reeves to take action in the budget. They are citing a funding deficit of more than £2 billion next year, prompting a swathe of local authorities to ask ministers for um, exceptional financial support. If you're Rachel Reeves, this couldn't have come at a worse time. Where will she find the money? She's already got to try to fill the £22 billion black hole in the country's finances that she's identified. And local governments are also meant to be keys to the economic growth that the Labour government wants to bring about. Labour have promised a raft of funding to ensure that local councils can build the homes that we all need and that Labour has promised. And they are promising multi-year funding settlements and to end wasteful uh, competitive bidding. Judging by the latest survey, though, it looks like time's really quite running out to try to deliver on some of these. Well, with us today, our UK economy reporter, Tom Rees. Now, Tom, three councils, Birmingham, Nottingham and Woking, have issued those Section 114 notices, effectively declaring bankruptcy. But how many more councils are likely to need a a bailout before getting to that stage? That survey from the LGA that we we got overnight um, said around one in four would need these bailouts, uh, which is equivalent to around you know, 80 councils. So what does that bailout mean? It's it's called formally in the sector exceptional financial support. And what that means is that councils are given permission to use their, you know, borrowings through their capital budget or to sell um, some of the assets that they have in order to make up a shortfall in in their day-to-day spending. And so it's 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 basically a step towards a, a, a 114 notice declaring bankruptcy. So the idea is this this comes in before the 114 notice to stop and getting to that stage. Yes, it's, it's, it's supposed to kind of stave off bankruptcy. But um, what we've seen in recent years is that normally it's just a step towards bankruptcy. Yeah, the LGA talking about £2 billion needed. How much do local councils need? I mean, how close to the edge are they? That's £2 billion, but obviously it's not kind of... Um, equally spread out. So uh, there'll there'll be some councils that are in a much worse position and are probably on the brink, really. But So so they say £2 billion over the next year. I've I've seen a number of saying something like £6 billion over the next two years. But I think what's more important is is that the pressures on council budgets are are probably only going to rise. You know, one of the big pressures on a lot of councils is social care because quite a lot of councils have social care responsibilities. Some don't, but a a lot do. And and, and the demand for those services is only going to increase, you know, as the the population ages. Now, some of these councils, Birmingham and um, Woking, for instance, there are special circumstances, aren't they? Birmingham has got a massive uh, equal uh, pay bill, £750 million. Woking made some perhaps rather uh, misjudged investments in hotels and offices but how many of these councils now in trouble are what you might call normal councils councils which haven't sort of messed things up in the past the last government you know were at pains to say 
that these councils that issued uh, 114 notices in recent years, uh, so we had Birmingham, Woking and Nottingham uh, last year, would you, you know, they were just mismanaged and they were unique cases. Um, but I think what's kind of really kind of caught people's attention in, in the sectors that we've heard from countless councils uh, across the country sort of warning that they're close to issuing one of these bankruptcy notices uh, and and that suggests that the pressures uh, are much more widespread and, that, and so some of the warnings have come from councils that that you know people think are, are relatively well run so what, what's been going on we, we've had high inflation that squeezed budgets in, in the last couple of years um, you know, as we mentioned before, kind of the soaring demand for services such as social care, but you know, there's also um, special education um, needs stuff as well. Um, and probably most importantly, has been the real terms funding cuts um, that we've uh, seen for for councils over the the, the last uh, you know 14 years or so. So um, the austerity era, you know, um, the Cameron Osborne austerity um, era was councils were really hard hit by that they were a, a much easier it was it was a lot easier to kind of put the cuts on councils than it was say the NHS um, so that the NHS had its budget you know expanded albeit at a slower pace whereas council funding from from central government was absolutely decimated yeah absolutely um uh, I was reading a bit from the think tank NISA, Max Mosley, talking about a perfect storm, a decade in the making, the issues at, at local councils because of the falling funding that you've mentioned and the rising demand you know, for social care. And, and, um, and then so trying to fill that gap with debt and investments, which have, has proved really very difficult for a lot of councils or, you know, has meant some missteps and now we're seeing interest rates going up of course which is really very different to to the situation in the last decade what do you think that all of these issues how do you think they're going to be solved i mean rachel reeves is hardly going to be able to just roll out a whole um load of money maybe maybe not what does it mean for what councils might do next i mean because the fiscal autonomy of councils is quite limited. Um, there are only so many ways of dealing with it. As as you said, we saw a lot of councils borrow money to invest in kind of assets such as commercial property and stuff like that. And the reason they did that was because um, was to generate a new source of income after seeing their funding from central government, you know, fall sharply. So they've tried that. That went disastrously wrong. You know, they bought a load of shopping centres before a pandemic that kind of wiped uh, the value of those. And so, so what are the options now? You've, you've got the government could increase funding uh, for these councils that, that that could get them out the hole or you could give them a bit more um, room on council tax. At the moment, they, they're, there are limits on how much councils can increase um, council tax. In some cases, such as when councils issue 114 notices, the council is allowed to increase uh, council tax by much more. So you could give them a bit more flexibility than that. But council tax is, is, is one of those taxes that because it doesn't come out of your paycheck and you you know, you know have to send the money to the, to, to the council, it's one of those taxes that people hate. So I, I wonder how easy that is to use as a lever, really. Yeah, because council tax is capped, of course, at three percent, isn't it? That's the without a, a special referendum, which hardly any councils have cho- have chosen to do. What are the other options available uh, to, to to councils face facing trouble? Face of trouble, um, they could try and increase other sources of funding. So you know, car parks or whatever, increase the the money they they make from that. They they could you know massively constrain what services they offer. You know, really. Um, and I was speaking to people um, in Woking, which was is one of the areas that is was really heavily affected um, and issued a, a 114 notice last year. You know, they've been really kind of rethinking about what the council can can deliver. Um, and, you know, a lot of, they're kind of closing a lot of kind of community centres and stuff like that and just going, we, we need to strip back to the bare basics. So unless you can increase the funding you get from central government, you you know, these are the sort of difficult choices that you, you need to be making, really. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, mind you, staggering that you mentioned parking fees and, and charges, given you know, if you're a Londoner, or certainly in the southeast of the UK, I mean, councils make about £2 billion from those sorts of, of charges already. already. Uh, speaking of which, how do you think this fits in then to the wider budget with Rachel Reeves? You know, we started the programme talking about all the pressures that the Chancellor is under, and this has surely got to be a big one. It's definitely a big one. And, you know, these are the kind of frontline 
services that people notice and you know it really adds to a sense of decay in an area when you know your library's closing down and your leisure centres closed down. The problem for councils is that their kind of financial crisis has, has really come at a time when the rest of public services are you know completely on their on their knees um and it's it's going to be very difficult uh, for councils to kind of compete with the likes of the NHS um obviously the military budget these days post Ukraine's invasion of Russia so i mean it's going to be competing for that extra money but given the reeves has given a very tough stance on her day-to-day spending you know she she wants to balance her day-to-day spending with any tax revenues she makes and only borrow for uh, capital spending so uh, Mm. public investment it limits how much she can give councils and unless she's willing to raise taxes by even more than many are predicting then uh, I think councils are going to probably get a bit of a rough deal here. Tom, is is there any fat left to trim? I think the suspicion among some people will be that councils still some councils are still not very efficient and although they may be closing services perhaps there are other ways that they could could cut costs have you, have you got a, have you got a view on 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 how efficient some of those councils are yeah so this was actually a view of the last government the last government um this slightly went was sort, sort of abandoned because of the, the election but the last government asked councils to basically you know review how you know, productive they were and, and come up with a plan to increase their productivity. Now, when I spoke to councils about this, they said, we've just had our budgets cut by X percent in real terms over the last over the last 15 years. If, if you want to look at efficient running of public services, this is this is where you find it. They very much push back here against this. But, but like you said, there's not a lot of fat left to, to trim. And councils have like statutory obligations to run some services so there's some stuff that they just can't touch you know stuff like the social care um, and that just basically leaves them with other things like um, cutting community centres and leisure centres and, and, and stuff like that we've had a little taste of what what might happen in other places in the likes of Woking and Birmingham and you know in Woking for instance they've basically just closed all their public toilets they've, they're selling off a load of sports field they're just basically narrowing what the council does and you, you've seen this across the country where the council budgets have been increasingly just taken up and swallowed by social care um, and you just get into the point where some councils up to like you know, 80 90 percent of their budget is just going on social care yeah it's an extraordinary uh, sort of situation as need has increased both with an aging population but also with a big big jump in the number of children you know requiring send special educational needs support um yeah it's a great difficulty that the government is going to have to deal with the local council funding crisis tom thank you so much for being with us that is uh, bloomberg's uk economy reporter tom reese That's about it from us for today. We're ending on, well, I think a difficult note, all the requirements and requests for the Chancellor. That's it from us for today. If you like the programme, don't forget to subscribe and give it five stars so that other people can find it on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you listen. This episode was produced by Tiwa Adebayo and our audio engineer was Sean Gostamakia. I'm Ewan Potts. And I'm Caroline Hepke and we'll be back with more tomorrow. This is Bloomberg. Bloomberg UK Politics. Listen weekdays at noon on DAB Digital Radio in London.